Why did Harry's demands not sit well with the entire royal family? Welcome. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel before watching the video so you don't miss any of our latest content. Thank you for your support. Let's take a look at nine unexpected facts about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle from Robert Jobson's new book. Royal correspondent Robert Jobson, promoting his new book Our King Charles III, Man and Monarch, was interviewed live by Jeremy Kyle and revealed a number of intriguing details about the relationships between the royal family and the Sussexes. The Sun highlighted nine of the most interesting moments. Let's delve into them. 1. Harry's behavior after the Queen's death shocked members of the royal family. At the top of the list is Robert Jobson's claim that Prince Harry made a series of demands just hours before the death of Queen Elizabeth II, which shocked members of the royal family. As a reminder, when it became clear that Her Majesty's condition was not improving, Harry was in the UK, he and Meghan had embarked on their pseudo-royal European tour, which was supposed to include visits to Germany and the UK. Close relatives of the Queen hastily flew to Scotland. But Prince Harry did not join them, instead flying separately on his own. He did not have a chance to say goodbye to his grandmother. She passed away before his arrival, and he later revealed that he found out about it from BBC News. In Robert Jobson's book, it is claimed that sources close to the royal family said that Harry had decided not to fly to Scotland with his brother, William, and uncles, Andrew and Edward, after disagreements over his wife Meghan, Harry insisted that she should also come to Balmoral. When Harry tried to insist that she accompany him, it was his own father who told him that she could not go there. Harry's demands did not sit well with the family, who were shocked by his behavior. 2. Queen Elizabeth II demanded a sweep for listening devices in the Sandringham Conference Room ahead of the Megxit Summit. One of the chapters in Robert Jobson's book is dedicated to the so-called Sandringham Summit, during which Queen Elizabeth II, Prince William, and Prince Charles discussed the Megxit deal with Prince Harry. According to Jobson, Her Majesty ordered a suite for bugs in the conference room in case any recording devices could leak details of the crucial negotiations to the press. 3. Meghan surprised Queen Elizabeth II with a three-word response. The book also claims that Meghan surprised the late Queen with her three-word response after Her Majesty gave the Prince's bride some important advice. Jobson writes that sources allege the Queen recommended Meghan spend time with Sophie, Countess of Wessex, now the Duchess of Edinburgh, for support and guidance on royal protocols, to which she replied, I have Harry. Jobson describes the Queen as taken aback by this remark. 4. William's Resolute Strategy in Dealing with Harry Jobson also analyzes the aftermath of Harry and Meghan's scandalous interview with Oprah Winfrey, in which they criticized racist Britain, the royal family, and the press, while highlighting Meghan's mental health issues. According to Jobson, the candid conversation undermined the trust between Harry, his father, and his brother, leading William to adopt a radically new approach in dealing with the couple. Jobson writes, both Charles and his elder son were troubled by Harry's lack of discretion, neither felt they could fully trust him again, and they decided not to meet him alone in the future. 5. The future titles of Harry and Meghan were discussed at a high-level discussion. The book also claims that the stripping of Harry and Meghan's titles was discussed at the highest level. However, Jobson adds, it is said that the king does not support it, but other senior members of the royal family are less lenient. Only time will tell. 6. Harry's scandals exhausted the queen. In his book, Robert Jobson writes that tense conversations between Harry and his brother puzzled the Queen, and Her Majesty believed that Harry and Meghan had gone mad. Furthermore, according to Jobson, the Queen had grown tired of the constant vilification of the Sussexes within the British monarchy. In his interview with Talk TV, Jobson added, The Queen saw and knew from close people that Prince Harry was so deeply in love with Meghan that it clouded his judgment and critical thinking. That's what Her Majesty thought. 7. Explosive money scandal led to Harry berating his father. The statement goes on to claim that Harry allegedly verbally attacked his father, now King Charles III, over the phone during an explosive argument about money. 
After Megxit, the prince demanded additional financial allowances from his father, beyond what had been agreed upon in the deal. Jobson recounts, Prince Charles simply stopped taking Harry's calls after his son berated him and repeatedly asked for money. When the queen asked Charles why he didn't give in, he told her that he's not a bank. 8. What Kate Middleton truly felt during the joint outing with Harry and Meghan at the Queen's farewell. In the part of the book that discusses what happened after the death of Queen Elizabeth II, Jobson reminds us of Harry and Meghan unexpectedly joining William and Kate in Windsor to thank the British people for mourning and paying their respects to the Queen's memory. He writes that Kate considered this outing with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry as one of the most challenging things she has ever done. The display of unity was simply an illusion, according to Jobson's book. And Kate, according to Jobson's book, later confessed to a senior member of the royal family that there were such hostile feelings between the two couples that the joint outing was one of the most difficult things she had ever experienced. 9. One of the most sensational claims in the book is that insiders within the royal family referred to Harry as the Meghan's hostage, blaming her for all the disagreements between the prince and his family. The aides also alleged that he had become a victim of Stockholm Syndrome, writes Jobson. In conclusion, I must say that while I do not admire Meghan herself, I am in awe of her ability to manipulate others and pursue her goals by any means necessary. If only she could channel that energy into peaceful endeavors. She could have gone far, much farther than simply becoming a duchess. However, for some reason, mentioning her name always leaves me feeling sad. How do you feel when you hear the name Meghan Markle? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Your support means a lot to me. See you in the next video.